Hello everyone, my name is Arush Kuchala with Western Computer and today we're going to have a brief video on financial dimensions on vendor payments. The purpose of this video is to highlight a fix that has come up in Microsoft Dynamics AX, the new version, that was previously a bug in Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012 R3. We're going to focus on what happens to the financial dimensions between an invoice and a payment to a vendor. So first, let's go look at the method of payment. And this is where this concern comes up. So specifically, let's look at our check. And we have this period field that says total. What this means is that if you have multiple invoices for a vendor, you go to make a payment via a check, it's going to aggregate all those payments onto one check or onto one payment journal line. We will see how this impacts in the remainder of this presentation. So first, let's go look at our invoices. Now, this issue persists whether these invoices are coming from a PO or they're direct to invoice. In this case, I went straight and made a few invoice lines. So, from Aid Supply Company, we have two invoices that they have sent us. We had our sporting division reach out to Aid Supply and purchase $250 worth of some goods. And at the same time, our chemicals division also reached out and purchased $350 of goods. Let's assume that these two business units don't have a central purchasing department, and so they each sent out their own request and they each got their own invoice. So we have two invoices totaling $600, and I am going to post that. One of the things I do wanted to bring note is that the AP side also had those same financial dimensions. So if I were to click here, you would have seen that we had five for electronics and 69 for chemicals. What this means is that our AP control account in our GL will also have the same financial dimensions as the expense side of this transaction. And if we want to see that, let's go ahead and take a quick look. We can go into our audit trail. And look at our voucher. And as you can see, every transaction has the associated business unit financial dimension. So we have our two for the five and two for the 69. This is our AP account and this is our expense. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and pay these invoices. So I am going to go to, in the accounts payable module, I'm going to go to the payment journal. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. And now we're going to use our payment proposal, which is exactly as if we were doing like a check run. And specifically for this demonstration, I'm filtering only on the 1003 vendor account. So I'm going to go ahead, press OK. And you see we have our two invoices that we had in our previous step. So I'm going to add these into our payment journal. And as you can see, we have one line. As said before, we were going to have one line because all our invoices are combined into one check. And so now let's look at our financial dimensions on the account. And as you can see, it's blank. And this makes sense. We can't put one of the two. We can't put either electronic or chemical because that would make us out of balance. Now, if you're a type of organization where there's no business unit required on the AP control account, you can leave this blank or in certain organizations I've seen, it's a required field and this will usually default from the vendor itself and populate here. That's the only way that it's going to be populated or it can be manual. For our example, I'm going to assume we have a centralized payment business unit. So let's assume all our payments come out of the home business unit. Or in this example, we can say that home was our default business unit for this vendor, but at the same time, they also do purchasing with our chemical and our sport division. So I'm just going to put in a number here. I'm going to put in home. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to post this journal. So in previous versions of AX, we would have seen this hit the GL with only the home division. You would have had no way to look at AP and say, what are my outstandings 
with my various divisions because when things get paid, the home division would have offset to your chemicals and to your sports, and you wouldn't have been able to know what's my outstanding AP by financial dimension. But in the new version of AX, if we are to go back to our audit trail, and let's look at the voucher of our payment journal. You can see here that the system automatically behind the scenes broke out the payment to the various financial dimensions. So if we look at the 2000-01 business unit, you'll see that we have a negative 250, a negative 350, and a positive 600. So a 250, 350 credit, and a 600 debit. So what happened is that in our AP account for the 001 business unit, it cycled in and out. There was no impact it via this transaction. And what they did was they offset it against the original dimensions that made up that AP account. So we had this one and it went 250 to the 005 and it went 350 to the 069. And what this has done is now we can actually see in our payment journal breakout by the financial dimensions of the invoice. If you were to go ahead and try this in one of the previous versions of AX, you'll see that it didn't do this. You would really only have this line and this line. And that would have meant that you don't have accurate tracking of open AP by financial dimension. So this is a fix that has been put into place in the most recent version of Microsoft Dynamics AX. Thank you for your time. I hope you found this video informative.